The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, about a quarter to one o'clock Chicago time. Um, I usually start these off early just to um, go over the disclaimers that I need to talk about before I present. So I'll probably spend about five or ten minutes going over this. Um, the reason I do that, if you're brand new, is that, um, I, you know, I could throw up the disclaimer and say, hey, you know, take a look at it and then throw it under the blanket and hope hope that you read it. But, you know, since I've been doing this for almost 25 years, I really have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to trading futures. So I do like to, um, you know, just make you aware of what this is all about, okay? The idea or the, you know, the whole idea of this, you know, why I do the CF on Thursday is to give the guys that are brand new an eyes wide open approach. Slow things down. Chances are you're in the trial. Maybe this allows you to absorb what's going on in the training room. That way after the trial, you, you can make an educated decision on whether you want to pursue this or not. Um, in addition to that, the guys that are, uh, Returning CFRN members, you know, they're always welcome, and I they pop in the room all the time, and um, the, their value really is to get more screen time, learn the personalities of the markets that we're trading. They're able to ask questions. Um, one thing that I'll do in the next hour is I'm going to labor over about a handful of things, some of the traps that people fall into if they're spinning their wheels. Um, so I'll go over that. So, you know, the idea is, you know, if you are a returning member, CFRN member, you know, maybe there's something I'm saying and illustrating or talking about um, and highlighting, you know, something, one of those things might keep you out of some of those traps. And um, so if we can clean those up, then uh, we can get you back on the path or keep you on that path of uh, being consistent. Okay. So. The goal this afternoon, number one, I have to talk about this, the disclaimer. Number two, I'm going to go over the trade setup. I'm going to break it down in slow motion, okay? And then we're going to jump into a live market, look for these same setups in the market, and then I'm going to jump inside the DOM, okay, which is this tower here. This is where we're buying and selling. Um, we'll jump in here, and I'll show you how to place a trade. I'll show you how to get in, how to manage to trade, and when to exit. Okay? So, you know, we'll do that all, we'll do that in slow motion. So, um, along the way, in fact, let me open up the question box and scoot it over here so it's in full view. That way you get a chance to ask questions, all right? So if you're confused about something or we need to you know, go over the point or what have you, just raise your hand and we'll we'll knock it out together. Okay. Uh, today is May 2nd. And um, again, this is another episode of CFRM Thursday, where we go over the trade setup in slow motion. And we're featuring the DT Pro platform, which is the platform I support. It's the same platform that Dwayne and Michael use. All right. That's a scoop. So, um, Let's knock this out here. All right, the disclaimer. Okay. Definitely is a warning label for those guys that are brand new to trading futures, without a doubt. Okay. Um, my experience with working with CFRN, um, by the time the people get to CFRN, they've been through that crew, this guy, that guy, this guy. They've learned this method and that method. And they're kind of numb to this whole disclaimer, okay? And basically, the disclaimer says you can lose everything and some in your trading account if you don't have a set, in, set of rules. You're not using stop losses. You're not engaged in the market. You're not watching over your trading account. You're not um, abreast of the news, uh, you know, what's going on during the course of the day. If you're not using any of those things, this disclaimer will hit you right smack dab in the face, okay? Um, like I said, I've been around for almost 25 years, so I've seen it in full view, okay? The good thing is 
if you go down the CFRM path, right, because that's why we're here, you are going to have a set of rules, right? We're going to talk about those in a few minutes. There's, there's three labeled here, but there's actually four. And the number one that I'm going to labor over, which is a big trap that people fall into, is if the market is trending, because that has to be the first thing. Is the market making higher highs or lower lows? Okay, so you are going to have a set of rules, all right? You're going to be on a four tick range chart. So you're going to have to be actively, you'll have to be in front of the screens, but you'll have to be actively involved in what's going on. Every trade has an eight tick stop attached to it, as outlined here, right? Um, so you're going to be using those stop losses. Um, you're going to have aggressive risk management. As the market goes down in your favor, you're going to be moving stop losses. So again, you'll have to be in front of a trading platform. You'll have to be in front of the screen. And um, you'll have to be engaged in what's going on. So um, you really you really can't uh, you know, just turn your back on it and set and forget it. Okay? So the bottom line in all, all of that is this. Okay? If you go down the CFRN path, it's going to water down the risk of this happening to you. Right? because you have a set of rules, you're using stop losses, you're in front of a trading platform, all that stuff. But in the end, okay, if you do all the right things, okay, you do everything I just outlined, you do place that stop, you know, below the market after entering a trade, okay, if for whatever reason uh, a piece of news comes out and the market just goes straight down, you always have the risk of the stop loss here not getting executed. Okay, it's a scary thought. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it is a reality. The good thing is, is that you'll be in front of a trading platform and all you have to do if you have DT Pro is hit exit at market and cancel. Get the heck out of Dodge and then reassess what the heck just happened. Okay, so now like I said, not a good way to start a, a webinar to give you all the scary stuff, but it's a reality and it shouldn't be sugar coated. And again, my, my goal in this is to give you an eyes wide open approach and it, it doesn't start with all the good stuff. All right. It has to start with, you know, what could happen and you know, you, you know, what you should be aware of. Um, so that's why we talk about it and that's why I take a few minutes to do it. The other part of this too is the funds that you put in, in a trading account should be risk capital okay and um, for whatever reason if you lose all of the money in your trading account it shouldn't change your lifestyle okay I think that goes without saying but um, the idea is it should be risk capital that's that's the bottom line okay second disclaimer is my relationship with CFRN um, no, I don't work for CFRN, and CFRN doesn't work for Daniel's Trading. All right, there is a line in between the two of us, okay? It's their indicators. They're the educator, okay? It's their trading tools, okay? It's their property. This is their indicator set built into my platform, DT Pro. So I support the platform, you know, the indicators while well, they're in here, the brokerage, the execution, if you decide to take the DT Pro route, okay? Yes, they're available in Ninja. However, the biggest the biggest um, advantage of using DT Pro over Ninja is, number one, me. You get to talk to a live body. You get to talk to somebody that's in the training room every day, that knows the setup, that knows the platform. Um, <clears throat> there's no exchanging emails to get things done. You can call my phone number. I'm the guy that's going to pick up. That seems to be the biggest value. Okay. There's some things that are, you know, other things that are better, like our platform is free and we have a direct route to the exchange. That's a big thing that's not advertised. But there's some other things, you know, that, that our stuff is better. Okay. They beat us on the commission. All right. But, you know, again, you don't have a lot of interaction with uh, who you're dealing with. But again, um, the idea is I support the platform, the brokerage, the execution, 
these are, this is property of Mike and Dwayne. So anything, if you just say, hey, I'm going to be a CFRN member, what happens from here? All the funds that, you know, the arrangement you make with CFRN is between you and them, whatever payment plans you decide to take. All the videos, the workshops, um, anything on their website, Logic 247, okay, all that is between you and CFRN. I have access to all this stuff, but the idea is if you have any questions relative to this, you can always call them directly. Uh, Val Valerie has been added, and she's a great asset. Um, she seems to be, she picks up the emails and phone calls and stuff like that. Um, so that's a, she was definitely a, 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 definitely a plus one in their column when they added her. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to, I have to disclaim that. So that's the bottom line with that. You know, the relationship started like eight or nine years ago. CFRM was just a radio program. And Dwayne and I somehow uh, met and he said, hey, you know what? You got years of experience. Why don't you hop on the radio program and we'll talk markets and, you know, if anybody has any questions, you can answer them. And so it kind of started that way. And um, so I was just giving commentary out and, you know, answering questions. And then, you know, what I noticed in the message box or, the, you know, like the question box, Dwayne was getting a lot of, hey, can you teach us what you're doing? Can you teach us? Can you teach us? Can you teach us? And he got together with Mike. Both of them are trade station developers. My platform reads easy language. I just happened to be at the in the right place at the right time. I said, look, the platform is free. Um, at the time, they weren't charging for any data, and it allowed people to, you know, try the indicators out for free and and get a demo and all that. And it was kind of just perfect, just worked out. So that's how that's how it started. <clears throat> so um, uh, it started on the radio program and it developed into, you know, developing indicators. I have no clue how you, you know, what the backbone is behind the indicators. I just know how they work. Um, I get that question all the time. It's just I don't know the nuts and bolts behind it. That's Mike. That's Dwayne. If you call me up and say, hey, is this a valid short or, you know, is this a buy or a sell? By all means, I'm qualified to answer it, and I'll probably offer you a few opinions on it. But uh, when it comes to the back end of it, I have no clue. Okay. Uh, as long as it works, you know, that that's, that's good with me. All right. So... That knocks out this. So that's it. I had two disclaimers I had to talk about before I got started. Um, that's why I opened the room early, just to knock those out so we could spend a good hour going over some setups, okay? And we could talk about them. All right? So next order of business is the setup. So if you're brand new, this is going to be a good cheat cheater you know, syllabus you can lean on. I know the attachment is um, a handout when you go inside the training room. If you ever gotten an email from me, I attach this to the email so you can reference this. Okay. And I'm just going to go over it again. So, um, you know, one big question I always get, and it, it's funny, it popped up this morning in, in, when Michael's, um, in Michael's training room there. Nothing's changed. Nothing's been form-fitted. And this this is the original template that Michael was using. It's back, set back in 2012. It's a NASDAQ. So nothing's been changed. Um, has there other, other trades developed over the years? Absolutely. The 137s, 164s, all that other stuff was created along the way. <clears throat> okay. This one's been around from day one. So that's why I'll go over this one because it just works. And that's the one Michael goes in and talks about in the morning. It's been around from day one. So and what the heck. So, um, so I pointed that out because it's a question I always get. But it was it popped up in the training room this morning. So I decided, you know, just thought that was a little tidbit. Um, the first order of business is the time frame. 
Okay, we need to get on a four tick range chart. Okay, so let me get my pencil out. Boom. You know, let me shut down the live. Let me stay in demo just in case. Okay, I'm in demo mode just for uh, clarity. Okay, shut down the live, went into demo. All right. Uh, four tick range. How do we get there, right? Chances are you might be on a 30-minute chart if you're following logic, right? Might be on a daily chart. Might be on a four-hour chart. Your chances are you're on a time-based element chart. Okay, we need to get to a four tick range because that's what's advertised in the training room. So all you have to do is hit this drop-down box. Okay, a box opens up. Go to custom and select range bar. Make that one look like a four. You're staring at the ES, S&P Mini, on a four tick range chart, okay? Now, one of the first traps that people fall into, they hit the drop down box, they go to custom, and they end up hitting tick bar, because everything is talked about and related to in ticks, right? When you're going, when you're talking about CFRN, they change, you know, you'll change that two to a four, and this is what a tick chart looks like on the ES. If you're staring at this, this is wrong. Okay, you fell into the first trap, but no biggies. Go to the four tick range. The tip off is at R in parentheses, and you could tell the difference. It's a lot smoother. All right, and the reason why they use the four tick range is that the height of each candle is four ticks in height. All right, so Michael can be predictive, all right, or he can be proactive in placing orders in the training room, okay? So when you start hearing Michael talk about highs and lows, okay, all right, if, he, if you hear him say, hey, if the high is 29.18.75, then the low needs to be 17.75, what he's gearing up to do is he's getting ready to Buy it on a stop or enter the market above the market or short it or sell it on a stop, which is entering below the market. Okay. As long as the rules, right, all the rules are in play. Okay. What he's doing is he's getting in with some momentum or he's getting in with some weakness. Okay. That's what he's doing. So if the mark takes off, okay, he'll be stopped into this position. Okay. And, or if the market does, you know, if it's a selling opportunity and the market just drops out of bed like it did this morning, if he has a stall stop underneath it, he's going to stop himself into the trade. Okay, so that's what he's doing. All right. So a big, you know, early on, um, guys were wondering, well, how the heck did you get into that trade? It just took off. And people were kind of scratching their head. And, and the reason was he was buying it on a stop. And he was selling it on the stop. He was he was doing it in advance. All right. So I just wanted to let you know when he starts calling out highs and lows, he's getting ready to place an order. Okay. Because a lot of times you don't see the dom in front of you. It's over on a different screen. Then he drags it over. Right. If you ever been in the room, you'll see that. Okay. That's what he's doing. Okay. This afternoon, I'm going to do a lot of left clicking in the green and the red. Holy smokes, guys. Um, Okay, so I'm going to be really transparent about it. If it does set up, you know, like in where Michael could do it in advance, like you see it in the training room, I will show you how to do that, all right, in, in advance, okay? So I can, I'll show you how to do that, okay? So all that being said, we need to be in a four tick range chart. That's the bottom line, okay? Four tick range. All right, so now we're going to work on the top portion of the chart, okay? So here's some buzzwords, all right, and stuff you'll hear in the training room. The red and blue line is referred to as the MA1, okay? Nothing fancy about it, MA1. The green line is called the BBC. Why is it called the BBC? That is short for bullish and bearish cross, which is step number one. It leads us into step number one, okay? 
meaning this. When the MA1 crosses the BBC, okay, and the MA1 is red, that's a bearish cross. If the MA1 is blue and it crosses the BBC, that is a bullish cross, okay? The one that's highlighted here is a bearish cross. The reason is the MA1 is red, okay? So at that point, we're looking for selling opportunities, okay? When the MA1 is red, we're looking for selling opportunities. If the MA1 is blue, then we're looking for buying opportunities, okay? That is step number one, okay? The bullish or bearish cross, all right? Now, note, I didn't say go short, go long, go short, okay? So we're looking for selling opportunities or buying opportunities because what we expect to happen after that cross leads us into step number two, which is this. The normal thing for the market to do after the cross is, is for the market to gravitate toward the BBC, okay? Make an attempt, flag, coil, congest, whatever, gravitate toward the green line. So we're looking for the market to challenge the green line, not only touch it, but look for a close in the direction of the trend. <clears throat> if we have a red MA1, then what we're going to be looking for is a down close or a red candle, okay? When everything is the same color, okay, and I'll go into this, that stacks all the probabilities in our favor when everything is the same color, okay? So if we have a bullish cross, Okay, when that MA1 is crossing the BBC and it's blue, then we're looking for a green or a blue candle. Okay, but again, the one that's highlighted here, bearish cross, red MA1. Thinking now I need to get short. Where am I going to get short? At the BBC, as long as we get the touch in close in the direction of the trend. Okay, so that is step number two. We challenge the BBC and we close in the direction of the trend, right? So step one and step two is knocked out, okay? Now our eyes, after step two, is in motion. Our eyes gravitate toward the slingshot or the oscillator portion of the chart, okay? This is going to lead us into step number three. And the trade exists down in the slingshot. Okay, it all is down here. Okay, and I'm gonna sh I'm gonna tell you why. So, <clears throat> here's some more buzzwords and a little bit of details of what the slingshot is. The red and blue line, blue and red line is referred to as a cycle. Okay. If we have a bearish cross and we have an attempt of the BBC and a red candle. What color do you think that cycle should be? We want everything to be the same color. We want this to be red, okay? If we're looking for a bullish cross, okay, and a bullish close, then we'd want that BBC to be blue, okay? Again, everything ideally you want to be is basically the same color, okay? But here's the scoop. What the, what the cycle is telling us, the fact that it's red, and pointing down like it is, it's telling us this, the momentum is bearish, okay? In the NASDAQ, on a four tick range, the momentum right now is bearish, okay? And we should be looking for po possible signs to get short, okay? What's the normal thing for the market to do? Pull back to the BBC, right? The fact that it got to the BBC and closed in that direction is a hint that that might be happening, that we're in this down trend, okay? And this price action in the green line here, I'm going to get into the green line. There's nothing special about this. This pull away from the cycle in conjunction with this price action here is the separation or the divergence Michael is referring to. It's saying, look, we're in the downtrend. This price movement 
along with the green line pulling away, is suggesting this is an air pocket in this ongoing downtrend. All right, and this space that's highlighted here in between is the separation or the divergence Michael is talking about in the room. Okay, so when step one is present and step two is there, and now we have step three, okay, the divergence or separation, man, there's nothing, there's nothing left to do, nothing to filter out, but just to go inside the DOM here and left click and get short. Okay, now one second, this is live and my phones are buzzing, so let me, I'm going to hit mute and then I'll get right back to you, so hold on. All right, sorry about that. There's nothing left to do but then to get short at that point, okay? Now... Why does the trade exist down in the slingshot? You, you really didn't kind of define what was going on. Here's this. No, oh, geez, one sec. Sorry, Bart was trying to get in, and the link wasn't working. Okay, so back on track. Step one, the bearish cross. Boom. Step two, pull back to the BBC with the down close. We're inside the slingshot. The slingshot is telling us, look, we have some bearish momentum. Look to get short. Look to get short. Okay. The green line is pulling away, telling us, hey, this price in action here, it's just a pullback in this ongoing downtrend. Okay, so we are short. What happens after this is where you take profit. So here's the scoop. What happens? What's the normal thing? The normal thing is for this green line to ultimately come down and get into the cycle. That's normal. And in doing so, what the market should be doing is making a new pivot low. Okay, so it's at this point. When the green line is getting into the cycle, okay, and price action is making a new low, it's at this point we get out of the trade and exit it, okay? That's the exit strategy. When the green line is pulling away and then ultimately gets down into the cycle. And the reason is this. What we expect, the other, the normal thing for this to do is the green lines to do, do this. Pull away, get into the cycle. Pull away, get into the cycle until this cycle now is turning blue. So what is this telling us? The momentum is bullish. So now we're looking for the green line to get underneath it and calling, creating bullish divergence. Okay. So in the end, what you end up doing is this, selling this top, selling this top, selling this top, and then buying this dip, buying this dip. That's it. Okay. As long as one major thing is happening, the market's trending. So we better be making lower lows on the way down, or we better be making higher highs on the way up, okay? If that's not happening, okay, or we're trading sideways, that is the first disqualifier. We don't push any buttons if the market is flat. Now, lately we've seen that, right? <clears throat> You've been in the training room and Michael's talking about how lame the market's looking, right? That's because we're trading sideways. So for you, you're sitting on your hands and waiting for the market to trend. Okay, so that is the breakdown of what's going on in the morning. So if you're brand new, okay, you're not learning to pick the top, and you're not learning to pick the bottom, and you're not learning to trade it from point A to point Z, okay, you're learning to take a piece 
out of the middle. And you are going to trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop until when? The green line ultimately gets down into the cycle and it's time to cover the trade because we expect the green line to pull away and then we would expect market action to pull away or make another attempt at the BBC. Okay, and it repeats itself. All right. Every trade has an eight tick stop attached to it. Okay. I'm brand new. What does that mean to me? If you're trading gold, if you're trading crude, if you're dead wrong, you're going to risk 80 bucks a contract. If you're trading the S&P, it's closer to 100. If you're trading the mini Dow, it's closer to 40 bucks. Okay. Different markets have their different contract specs and point values. Okay. But the bottom line is every trade has an eight tick stop attached to it. That's a constant that doesn't change. Okay. Sometimes you'll see Michael in the training room put targets in. Okay. You can do that. But the um, he's doing that because he's trying to get his goal. Um, the idea is just to trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop, trail the stop. Okay. So that's it. So we're going to look for these, this setup, okay, in live setup, live market environment, okay? That's it. So, <clears throat> so it's a little after one, which is fine. So let's let's look around. Number one, as I said earlier, the number one. There's something you want to write down on a piece of paper. The top of that piece of paper, you should write down number one, Bert said, the market should be trending. It should be making higher highs or lower lows before we push any buttons, right? That's our number one disqualifier if it's not, okay? I'm looking at the ES chart right now, and the first thing under that point number one is, you should write down, Bert said, I should practice hitting this zoom out button, okay? The reason you do that is so you can see what's going on to your left, okay? Is the market trending, okay? At first glance, this is a real easy one, okay? We are not trending. We are trading sideways, and this one's pretty easy and obvious, okay? If it isn't, and if you're unsure, number one, don't push a button, right? has to be easy and obvious, and when in doubt, just stay out, okay? You're going to be on a four-tick range chart, so there's going to be plenty of opportunities. And these guys are lighting up the logic button, okay, logic room. The other thing is, too, look at dynamic support and resistance. Notice how it's side-by-side side like that. That's another clue, okay, that we're just back and forth. Okay, if it looks like a pair of choo-choo tracks, okay, that's that's sideways action. All right, if that's the case, that's disqualifier number one. We don't push any buttons. Okay, now it's easier. This one's an easy one. All right, to see, it's not so easy. And the reason why I tell you to get in the habit of hitting that zoom out button, because in the training room you're looking at Michael's charts. He's got floating charts that are blowing up pretty good. So it kind of looks something like this, right? All right. If you take a few minutes just to go one, two, three, this might be the difference between you making and losing money on a particular trade. Okay. You didn't see the bigger landscape of the market. Okay. You were looking at it under a microscope and you got stuck in the middle. Okay. So again, it's worth the few ticks, the few clicks of the button here to see more of a, uh, landscape of what's going on okay if there's a big reason why people are spinning their wheels it's this one here they got caught in a sideways market okay all right not to labor over that let's move on to crude oil because crude oil has been rocking and rolling okay all right so notice first thing I do I zoom out okay we're making some higher highs here Okay, so then we're trending, right? All right. So a few things here to show you after the fact, and that this is not what this is about, but 
Here, I'm just going to show them anyways. Bullish cross. The MA1 is blue. And, one second, let me answer this. My webinar be an hour every, sorry, every Thursday. All right. Bullish cross. What's a normal thing f for the market to do after the cross? Pull back to the BBC. Donna, are we looking for a touch of the BBC, but a close in the direction of the trend? Okay. MA1 is blue. We should be looking for a blue candle. That checks off step number one and two. Do we have divergence? Is the green lined underneath the cycle? Okay. Yes, it is. But wait, this is a different color, right? Yes, it is. It's a different color. All right. That leads me into my next point. After you get this cross, okay, and we identified the cross here, your next step, and this is a habit you should get into, is activate this trend line. Okay. Right here. Activate the trend line, okay? And the reason you do that, okay? After the cross, we know step two is the normal thing for the market to do is to pull back to the BBC, okay? So we have to get in the habit of drawing a trend line, okay? You should have trend lines all over your chart by the end of the day. The reason you do that is twofold. Number one, you're going to find out that markets have have so much bullish or bearish momentum, they won't get to the BBC. And if they do, if they don't, I mean, and they violate our trend line, and we have the divergence down below, okay, it's time to get inside the DOM and take action. That's number one. Number two is for this reason. The cycle turned color on us. Okay, I, as I said earlier, this puts all the probabilities in our favor, right? When that cycle is the same color as that MA1, right? It's blue, blue, okay? Uh-oh, this starts watering it down a little bit, right? That's correct, okay? But when this turns red on you, and as long as it's flat and not angling at a 45 degrees against you, Draw the trend line. Get in the habit of doing it. Okay? If that turns color on you, like it did here, we need a close on the other side of the trend line before we can take action. Okay? So, to repeat, step number one, bullish cross. Once we get the cross, we, we engage the trend line. As the market is pulling back to the BBC, we draw the trend line. We're doing that because we don't know if it'll get to the BBC. But number two, if the cycle turns a different color on us, hey, the trend line's already drawn, and we're not fumbling looking for a trend line and trying to draw it after the fact. It's drawn in advance. And if the cycle turns color on us, then we need to close above the trend line. It does that here, okay? So that's why we do that. We get in the habit of drawing the trend lines for a couple reasons, okay? Look, if it gets come down here and that cycle is all blue, no harm, no foul, okay? It did what it was supposed to do, get long, take action. If it's pulling back to the BBC and this turns color on us, great, the trend line's already drawn. So then we're just looking for the close above it. All right, so there's some good reasons why we do it. All right, so again, after the cross, I want you to get in the habit of drawing a trend line. That's the bottom line. All right, let's delete it. How do you delete the trend line? Two ways. You can right-click over it and hit remove. Or once you have a ton of trend lines drawn, See this dotted square, it says select all. If you left click on that, notice how the black X just highlighted. You left click on it, it'll remove it too. That'll be your quickest option when you have a ton of trend lines uh, drawn, okay? 
All right. So that is the crude. Okay. Are we making higher highs? Absolutely. So what would we expect to happen now? I'll pull back to the BBC. Okay. And trend line is engaged. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we get that pullback. Okay. Notice the cycle is blue. Okay. That's good. So we're going to try to draw a trend line and get long crude if it cooperates. All right. So stand by. So if that happens, what I'll end up doing is left clicking in the green here. Okay. This is the tower. This is this. If we get long, we click in the green. If we get short, we click in the red. Okay. So we're waiting for the market to do the normal thing. Pull back to the BBC. S&P is probably, I thought it might be rallying here. It's not. All right, so we're looking at crude in June, and we're looking for that pullback. Let's see if we get it. Okay. Let me move on to the natural gas while the crude's kind of doing its thing. Okay. I just moved to natural gas in June. Notice I zoom out, okay? We have a little bit of sideways action here, right? You might say, hey, wait a minute. Here's resistance and we're trading north of it. Yeah, that's true, we are, all right? We do have a bullish cycle, right? That's good. And we have a bullish cross, okay? So that's good, all right? So let's see if we can't screw around with the natural gas, okay? This is how the trend line should be drawn. Wick, everything on top of the wicks right here, okay? That's how your trend line should be drawn. So we're looking for a pullback to the BBC and then a blue candle, okay? A blue candle. The cycle is blue, okay? And we have bullish divergence. The green line is underneath, so there's everything is there. Okay, so if it qualifies, I'm going to go in the green and left click. Now, while that's happening, I want to show you something. Okay, with the DOM, okay, this tower here, this is where we're doing our buying and selling, right? I meant to hit this thing. Okay, this is where we're buying and selling. Okay, that's called the depth of market. Okay, what you can do is if you hit this Tinker Toy Triangle on top of the DOM here, called Bracket Options, notice how the bottom of the DOM opens up, okay? If you select Sell Stop and Buy Stop only, just these two here, and right-click over it and hit Factor and Ticks, and right-click over Sell Stop, Factor and Ticks, make sure these values are factors equal 8, because what that will do is this. As soon as you get into the market, it's automatically going to put an 8-tick stop behind us. Okay? So that's one less button you have to push. Okay? It's automatically going to do it for us. All right? So let's see if this thing comes down a little bit and we can get our hands dirty for the first time this afternoon. Okay? So we're looking for the market to do the normal thing, which is pull back to the BBC. Okay? So natural gas is setting up for potential long. And I'm going to look at crude again. Crude just not pulling back, so we're still waiting for it to do the normal thing. Okay. Okay, let's go back to natural gas. This looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, that's why I gravitate toward it. Okay. And notice zooming out, we did make some higher highs. I'm not thrilled about we made a marginal new high. Okay. But... It's It's got a lot of the things I would look for, okay? So we're looking to get long. And your trend line should look like mine off the top of the wicks, okay? So if we get a close above here, not so two things are going to happen. We're going to hit the BBC, right? Or it's got so much momentum, it'll close above the trend line here. In either position, 
we're ready we're already situated so here's the up close but not a close above the trend line so here's where Michael is predictive ready if the low is 259.3 okay then you would right click on 259.8 259.8 would put us right here and clearly above the downtrend line we drew. Okay, so let me repeat what I just said. If the, it's changed a little bit here, so I'm going to drop it one tick. The low is 259.2. The high has to be four ticks, right? So 2 plus 4 is 6. 259.6. Your order now should be 259.7. If you add or subtract 5 from then the current high or low, in this case the low, that is the exact number you're going to click on. And you are going to right click. Okay, Right clicks create stops. Okay, Left clicks create limits. Okay. So we're trying to get in on a stop. That's why it's not being executed right away, because it's waiting for the market to get up there before we get long. Okay? Bullish cross. It's trying to pull back to the BBC. If we get a close above the trend line, that's going to activate the long, right? We have a bullish cycle. And we have a bullish divergence. Okay, it's got, and here's the space in between. So it's got everything. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's waiting for the market to qualify. Okay, so there's basically two ways you can get in. You can be proactive, buying it on a stop like we're doing, or you just let the market go up there, qualify, and then left click instead. Okay, but then that's a proactive way of doing it. So I'm just going to cancel it. I'm not going to ignore it, but if it gets up there and qualify, I'll show you how to do it. All right, maybe it doesn't. That'd be nice if it does right off the bat, because then we could talk about it. Okay, note what I'm doing right now. I'm going to adjust the trend line for that wick. This is why we wait for a close. Okay, let me go over this again. The original trend line was here. We didn't get a close above the trend line, so I have to adjust it. Okay, I adjust it for that wick. So we're waiting for a close above the trend line. Okay. So the, your question should be, when do I stop adjusting? When, I, when should I stop adjusting the trend line? We stop adjusting until or unless we hit the BPC, which it's doing now. Okay. So if it touches the green line, we're not going to do any more adjustment with the trend line. And it just did. So now this is fixed. Okay, we don't do anything. So if we get an up close, we have a blue cycle. We have bullish divergence. It would be all systems go to get long. So again, as Michael would do to be proactive. All right, so here we go. I'm glad this kind of happened. What does that tell us right there? Two things. Number one. That starts watering down the probability. Right. Number two, the trend line is required. Number three, we need a close above the trend line before we can get long. Okay? That's why you draw the trend line in advance. Okay? Because now you're just, you're set. You don't have to do anything else. You're just ready to take action if that happens. Okay? That's the up close. But that cycle is red. we got to wait for the close above the downtrend line. So stand by. Okay, we're waiting for the up close. Okay.
Okay, so we're looking to get long as long as it qualifies. Again, if the low is 258.7, add four ticks to that, the high must be 259.10. 259, okay, right clicking at 259.20, okay, would be the entry if you were buying it on a stop and being proactive, okay. 259.20 would be above the downtrend line. Okay, 259.20 would be above the downtrend line, which activates the long, right? Okay, so that's one way to do it. That's what you'll see in the training room with Mike, so I'm just going to cancel it. So it hasn't done it. All right. Two things to talk about. Well, I'm going to give it one more. Hopefully it comes down a little bit and there's something to talk about. Okay. Stand by. The red indicator, right? The red cycle waters down the probability, right? As I said earlier. Okay. Disqualifier number two is starting to poke its head above Okay, starting to pop up here. And here's the scoop. Here's the second trap that people fall into. Okay, if the cycle starts turning red, okay, we know it waters the probability down, but it starts curling down at a 45 degree angle. Okay, what that's suggesting, okay, is a cycle reset. In other words, the market is just going to go do this. It's going to go into a larger correction. Okay. If that happens, if it turns red and starts curling down, that is disqualifier number two. We do not take any trades. Okay. Along with that, usually they happen side by side. See this black step line? It's great for trailing stops in a market that gets parabolic. But as the market is pulling back to the BBC, okay, if that black step line, as it did right here, see how we had the cross here and the market started doing the normal thing and pull back and just blew through it? That black step line pierces the BBC as it's doing just about right here. That's the third disqualifier. Okay, so we had three disqualifiers. Number one, a market trading sideways, we don't push any buttons. Number two, this is the big one that pops up. The cycle turns a different color on us, not in the direction of the trend, and starts curling over. Okay, that's disqualifier number two. And then the last one, which is usually happens side by side with this one, okay, is that the black step line gets into the BBC. Okay. So the for the moment, this isn't looking so easy and obvious as it did before. So we're going to take it off the table and go fishing somewhere else. Okay. Finally, the crude pulled back to the BBC. Right. Here was the up close. And here's that point I was just talking about. Look at the cycle. This is what we want to see in a bullish scenario. This is not what we want to see. Okay. It's a different color and pitching against us at a 45 degree angle. That is telling you this. Either the market's going to do that or it's going to chop. Okay. And cause you grief. A lot of times you'll get stopped out. Or you'll get you'll get out at a break even, but along the way this back and forth action will just kill you mentally. Okay. So again, that's a big trap that people fall into because oftentimes Michael's in the training room and he's take, putting trades on and taking them off with the cycle a different color. That's okay as long as the cycle is flat. Okay. So like here's the pullback here. This is questionable, okay, but 
that's possible okay bearish scenario okay the market does the pullback to the BBC this should be red it's blue right well it's it's flat okay that's fair game okay so as long as it's not let's do this this is fair game okay this is a bearish scenario ideally you want red right it turned blue on us watering down the probabilities trend line required but it's flat okay yes you could take action on it okay this no way we see that uh -uh. okay so now your next question is well how do I tell if it's a 45 degree angle okay well textbook version what Michael will do is tell you to take one of these squares and just draw a line just like that right I'll tell you this the easiest thing to do okay if if you're asking yourself is this 45 it looks more like 30 or 35 or 20 25 if you're asking yourself those questions don't touch it, it has to be easy and obvious what would easy and obvious be oh how about everything just being the same color okay so if you have to ask yourself the question don't don't take it out don't take just don't push any buttons all right so now the crude sideways you know, then you're going to say, hey, well, look, it went up. I could have made some money. Yeah, you could have. Chances are it would have been a break even with the pullback. All right. But that looks pretty after the fact. But in, in all honesty, that's that's not a trade. That's not a setup. All right. Moving on. We got, we got to go over a lot of good points there in that one little section. Going back to the S&P. Okay. So let's talk about this blown up picture right bearish cross pull back to the BBC right with the down close that is the first down close the cycle is red and we got a little bit of divergence right the market reacts and goes down right looks like gravy in the end zoom out zoom out zoom out because that's what Bert said to do and guys we are still stuck in that range all right so there's nothing going on in the ES right now okay that sideways action okay so looks pretty after the fact but we're stuck in the range okay yeah oh you know what do this Suresh and this goes for everyone just go to YouTube and Google, or not Google, you know, search CFRN Thursday. And I have all the recordings in there. I do them every week. Yeah, they'll drive you nuts after a while. But I'm going to labor over the same points over and over and over and over again. I pound it in your head about trending and drawing trend lines and making sure everything is easy and obvious. I think if you stay on that path, all right, you uh, you'll be better off. Probably less trades. The house isn't going to love you for it, but um, at least you're you. There's no there's no other filtering. Okay, it's everything's the same color. All right, it's trending. There's nothing else to filter out. Okay, you, that's it. All right. Um. All right. Let's go to gold. I don't know. Let's just go go around. Okay. Notice the first thing I do, zoom out, zoom out, okay? Okay, we start trending a little bit here. We have some higher highs, right? But for the moment, notice what's happening here. We're trading sideways, okay? Know this poke above doesn't mean we're breaking out. Okay, you notice how we fell right back in the range, okay? So we basically have to get out of this little box, the upside or to the downside before we can get excited. What you can observe from this, observe from that, is this. The cycle is blue. Okay? So it would be nice observing, and, and you'll graduate toward this, that point. Okay? You'll start looking at things in advance with time. Okay? But like this. 
hey, I see a nice slope to a blue cycle inside the slingshot. So if we get north of resistance here, that might be a pretty good setup to get long. Okay, you'll start seeing that in advance, but it doesn't happen in two days. Okay, and you need to spend time in front of the markets, in front of the screens, and watching the markets and the personalities of the markets that you're trading. Okay, that's why people ask me all the time, why are you looking at natural gas? I thought that was a crazy thin market. It is. I just know the personality of that market. So I am comfortable with it and I'll trade it. And that's what you'll do too. You'll eventually you'll have you might have four or five, six different markets and you'll whittle it down to one or two, maybe three. Okay. So the more you look at the better. Euro currency. Okay, notice I zoom out, stuck in a box, right? Okay. Have the bullish cross here. Pull back to the BBC with the up close. Blue cycle with a nice slope. Bullish separation, the green lines underneath it. We do have a reaction. That doesn't surprise me. Okay. But again, in all fairness, we're stuffed in we're we're stuck in a range. What's interesting, it's just an observation. Sometimes you're going to see, mark, like crude did today, right? Just It really broke down. Sometimes you'll see markets just catapult out of here or just break down. Okay? What happens is we get stuck in this box, and it's just building up, you know, building up a lot of steam. And you, if we run through this resistance to support, you'll get that runner. Okay? But the idea is, hey, we're not in the business of doing that. We're in the business of letting the market break out, trend, and then go with the flow. All right? But just an observation. All right? It's like barging down a door a couple times and need a good run at it. As soon as we get through it, through it, it's off to the races. All right? And that's usually when you get your runners. All right. So we've identified the euros and the British pound. Is messy here too. Swiss franc, same thing. Okay. Okay, the Canadian dollar. Let's do this. So I want to show you how to put a trade on here too. All right. Canadian dollar. Is sideways here too okay if we get the up close okay let's see if we can't push any buttons in the Canadian okay so I don't want you guys to touch your Dom at all don't touch the mouse okay because this isn't an e easy and obvious one it's just one I want to you know let me go let me go through some of the other ones here before I do that see if we can't find something juicy to sink our teeth in here. S&P is going to be stuck, so I'm not going to do that one. Crude. Gold. Here. Let's do this one. All right. Gold pulled back to the BBC. Do not do anything. I want you to watch. Okay. Pulled back to the BBC, did the normal thing, and had the up close, right? The cycle is blue, and the green line is pulling away, all right? Left click in the green, hit OK. OK, left click in the green, and hit OK. Let's do one thing better here. Now I know I'm in. All right. So why did I do this? Number one, it gives me a chance to show you how to place an order. Okay. So what I did is I, I attempted to left click in the green. Okay. And created a limit order. Okay. Notice the ticket says, hey, I want to buy one at 1272.70. Okay. Here's that stop loss I was talking about earlier. Okay. 
That's a result of creating a bracket with this Tinker Toy Triangle. The buy stop and the sell stop is checked off and the factor is 8, right? Just make sure you right click over it and have everything factor in ticks, okay? That should read 8. Why? Because that's what this says. Those are the rules, 8 ticks, okay? Now, I did that to show you how to place an order, okay? This market is not trending, right? We already talked about that. Okay, we have a double top here and we got a double bottom here and we're really kind of inside of a box here, right? What we have going for us, okay, is we did get the pullback to the BBC. We had the up close. So I want you to observe that. We have a cycle that's blue. It has a pretty good slope to it, right? And the green line is pulling away. So we have that separation, right? So what's the normal thing for the market to do? The, market th the normal thing for the market to do is, first of all, this green line to get into the cycle. Okay, and the cycle is going to work like this. At some point, they're going to touch. All right? And in doing so, the market should make a new pivot high. Okay? When the market's making a new pivot high and these are touching each other, that's when we close out the trade. Okay? Along the way, there's some money management rules, right? The rule is this. If it goes plus four ticks in our favor, one, two, three, four, if it gets to there, we move our stop to break even. Break even is our entry. How do we do that? This is our stop loss. It's eight ticks away. All you have to do is left click over the one, hold the click down or the mouse, drag and release. Drag and release. Okay, that's all you have to do. Right now it's set at eight ticks away, okay, because it hasn't gone four ticks in our favor yet. Okay, so when it gets up to here, one, two, three, four, we can drag that stop up all the way up to our entry point. We take the risk off the table. Okay? The other rule is if we get a close above or below the MA1. What is the MA1 again? It's this red and blue line. We get a close above that. We also move our stop to our entry. Okay? That's the two rules you're looking for, okay? And then in the end, we're looking for the green line to get into the cycle, okay? And when these two intersect, that's when we're getting out, right? That's the game plan. So we're set long. Notice in the DOM, there's a few places. It'll up here. It's this position. It'll tell you right here in the middle of the DOM. If you have a PNL up, Okay, that'll be moving. Look at the green line on your chart. That also tells you you're long from that price. There's a lot of places where it says, hey, you're long this market right now. Okay. And again, this is our stop loss. That's part of the bracket. Okay. We're just waiting. Okay. We're just waiting for the market to go up. Okay. Again, I told you to hold off and do nothing because we were trading sideways, right? And sideways means we have to get above this high. Dynamic resistance, dynamic support, side by side, okay? So we're just sitting. So we'll come back to it, okay? So let me put an alarm here. By the way, if you ever want to put an alarm in, go right in the middle and left click. That little alarm will let me know that we're there and I'll show you how to drag the stop up. But not, but let's not look at paint dry. <clears throat> oh wow, this is... Alright, so the market broke out of the box, right? 
So now we can look for shorting opportunities. Okay. Notice the first thing I do, zoom out. We broke outside of the box, right, to the downside. Okay. We have the bearish cross. Now I trend line. Okay, I activated the trend line. So now we're looking for the market to do what? The normal thing, pull back to the green line or the BBC. Okay. The slingshot is red. Doesn't really have a good slope like it does back here. See over here, that was good. So it's turned blue. So that's already telling us that's a, that's a warning sign, right? That's also telling us we're going to need the trend line. All right, so hold on. Corner of the body, corner of the body. Okay. Here's that 45 degree angle, right? That's not good. So that's a disqualifier. Okay. But if we get a if we get a break, I'm gonna. I don't again. I don't want you to do anything. Okay. Again, I want to show you how you're gonna get into this thing on the down. Okay. So let's see. It's already touched it. All right, so we need a close below the trend line. We just okay. Disqualifier is right here. It's a 45 degree angle up, so we don't touch. So I don't want you to do anything, but if it qualifies, we'll uh, we're gonna I'm gonna do it anyways, just to show you. Hopefully, I, I can show you a little bit of risk management how to do that. Okay, so again, we like the fact that it was making lower lows. Okay, we like that, but that's a problem right there. So again, if the high is 13 and a half, the low should be 12 and a half. So our order would be 12 and a quarter would be the sell on a stop. Okay, okay, it's going higher. And now look, the black step line okay, is into the BBC. So as I said earlier, usually when you have this, this will happen too. There is the first down close against the BBC, okay? So let's just do it. I don't want you to do anything. So again, first down close, Okay, so we are short. Okay, it says up here. Okay, gosh. Let me do something real quick. Auto Center Max, it's on. The demo's goofed up. Okay, so we are short here, and our stop loss is right here, this number one. Okay, so if she breaks down, if she goes plus four ticks in our favor, we will move the stop down to our entry. One, two, three, four. If it goes here, we will move the stop. Okay. Now we talked about this being a disqualifier and the black step line being in here. That's another disqualifier. That's why I haven't didn't that's why I told you to lay off on your mouse and don't push any buttons. But again, I wanted to show you this was an opportunity to get show you how to get short. Okay, inside the DOM, and I can point that out. Okay, so I'd like the, this thing to move down a little bit so we can drag the stop down. Okay. I'd expected more movement than this. I understood that with the gold, but... Uh, the ES, come on, guys. So we're just waiting here, so hold on. Should not be surprising this price action. Why? 
because of this, right? Here's our stop loss. It's right here, okay? Where's the current market price? Right here. Okay. That is not surprising. That happened. And like I said, that's the reason why we didn't touch the silly thing, because this is the trap that people fall into, okay? This is why I did what I did, okay? Not only was I able to show you how to get short, okay? But to show you, that is not good. You want everything to be the same color, okay? All right. So right now, we're just waiting for the S&P to qualify. Now you're going to say, hey, we have a bullish cross here, right? Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay, we're in a downtrend here, guys. So we're not trending up. We are actually in a downtrend. Okay? So no, we want, we do not want to go long. Okay? All right, let's go back to our little gold thing. Stuck in the box. Not surprising. Why? Okay, because we're stuck in a range. Okay, we're trading sideways. Okay, and look, it didn't quite get the plus four ticks. All right, and we're right smack dab in the middle. Okay, you could expect that with a market that's stuck in a range. Okay, okay, let's move on. We'll look at our energies. Natural gas fell asleep on us. Good thing we're not monkeying around with that. Okay, again, this is an interesting point I made earlier, right? That's not good. And I said, hey, avoid that. Yeah, we did make some higher highs, but ultimately, look what's happening here. We're starting to break down a little bit. Okay? So, again, you might see this and go, hey, you know that Burt guy said not to do anything. Well, in the end, you would have been stopped out a few times at break even. Okay? All right, so hold on. My phone's buzzing. All right, so I'm back. All right, so we got a few more minutes. I'm going to take one quick look. Okay. And by the way, the rules apply even on a larger time frame. Where would you think the market should go to? And this is the crude oil again. I'm on a 30 minute chart, right? Where do you think it should go to? Okay. So if I were looking at the crude, I was looking for a place to get short, and I'm more of a time based guy, right? I'd start our earmark in this level, right? Why? Because the normal thing for the market to do is to gravitate toward the BBC. Okay. Let's look at um, S&P. The normal thing for the market to do is to gravitate toward the BBC. Look at that. We did. So we finally got there. Okay. Even after being down at you know, closer to 2904.03, with some patience, okay, this should give you the confidence to say, hey, at some point, we're going to ultimately grab, gravitate toward the BBC. And you know, if we quite don't, okay, you're going to do the same thing that you do on a four tick range. You're just going to draw a trend line, right? All right. Yeah, we poked our head below it, but we sure didn't close below it, right? My trend line would be like this, okay? So, again, the same rules apply, even on time-based charts, okay? Daily. What's the normal thing for the market to do? Gravitate toward the BBC. No surprise, the S&P is holding this level. Yep, sometimes we spike below it. Right? That's normal. Stop losses, emotions, all that other stuff, right? Okay? But if we close above this level, we might get a bounce. So if I'm a guy looking at the chart on a daily, 
And I'm looking, where do I get long? Where do I get long? I don't know. I would start right here. Right? Start looking at levels there. So again, it doesn't matter if you're on a four tick range chart or if you're with logic, right? You're on a 30 minute chart. And if you're a guy that really likes to do daily stuff like me, okay, I'm more of a swing trading type dude, then you might look at the dailies, okay? It's all the same thing. All right, and now we're right smack dab in the middle of that box, right? And we're toward the lower end of the trading range, but the idea is... Um, with the ES, we identified that we were trading sideways here, and it wasn't until we saw this action we could say, hey, maybe we're starting to break down, okay? The, norm, the normal thing happened. It pulled back to the BBC, but this was wrong, okay? This wasn't red. It was blue, and it was at a 45-degree angle, and that's one of the traps that people fall into, Okay. So the bottom line is, number one, get in the habit of zooming out if you have DT Pro. Number two, get in the habit of drawing trend lines after that cross. Okay? And there's two reasons for that, right? Because right? we don't know if it'll get to the BBC and the cycle might turn color on us. Okay? So we have to do that. All right, and the last thing is keep an eye on the color of the cycle. If you want it easy and obvious, everything should be the same color. Yes, you can trade it when they're different colors, but the cycle better be flat. But if she starts curling up or curling in the wrong direction, when in doubt, stay out. Don't even monkey with it. Okay. Now, this is recorded. Okay, I have to decode it, whatever I have to do on my end, okay? And then this afternoon or tomorrow morning, I'll throw it up on YouTube, okay? So you can go through, you can listen to all of them if you want, okay? Just go start today and go backwards if you have to, but you're going to hear me talk about the same stuff over and over and over again, okay? So um, lean on that. That's a good cheat sheet if you're brand new, okay? The same things that I just went over is what Michael is doing in the training room, but in, you know, fourth or fifth gear. He's got two hours. He has a goal. He's trying to entertain everyone. So there's some motivation for him to be in and out of trades, okay? You don't have to be if you wait for the easy and obvious stuff, okay? For the guys that are brand new, idea was to give you an eyes wide open approach, Okay, so at the end of your trial, if you want to push the PayPal button, that's fine. That's between you and them. But at least, you know, you know what you're to expect and what you're getting into. And lastly, if you're going to use DT Pro, you guys can lean on me. I'm a phone call away. You, we can exchange emails. I know the setups, okay, and I know the platform, all right? So you have everything at your fingertips, okay? That's it's just up to you guys, okay? That's it. I, I do this every Thursday. So if you want to hang out for a while, you know, on Thursday, let's do it. Okay. And um, I'm in the training room every morning. So if Michael's away, I'll step in, say hi, answer any questions, maybe make some observations. Okay. So um, shoot me an email or give me a call if you have questions. Okay. And um, I'll see you in the training room in the morning. Okay.